price in the U.S. inventory. They basically got to stop the momentum. You know, they got to counteract the Earth's orbital velocity so they can slow down enough, if you will, to fall into the inner solar system. Even then, they're going to have to make seven flybys of Venus over seven years to shape the trajectory just to, just to the right point so that this spacecraft will pass within that four million mile point we talked about to collect the science. It'll endure enormous temperatures, 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit on the sun shield, and yet they got to keep the instruments uh, cool enough so they can operate and collect this valuable data. This spacecraft is going to travel seven times closer to the sun than any spacecraft ever launched. So no matter what they find, it's going to make news. It certainly seems that way. Just the cooling apparatus alone seems pretty remarkable trying to keep that cool. But tell me about it. Why now? I mean, we've gotten so much buzz uh, about the Mars mission. So why are they choosing to do this now? Well, you know, they've been, they've been trying to do a mission like this, or at least talking about it, for decades. The problem was the technology just wasn't up to the task. There weren't enough, uh, there weren't the type of materials you need, as you say, to keep the spacecraft cool enough to operate because they really need to get in close to answer these fundamental questions. Now, if you think about the impact of geomagnetic storms, these are huge storms on the sun that can blow enormous amounts of charged particles toward the Earth. They make the northern lights on a good day, but on a bad day, uh, those storms can take down electrical grids, cause all kinds of problems for satellites, etc. So they're hoping as part of understanding the basic physics of the sun's atmosphere uh, to get a handle on how to forecast these storms, how to perhaps be able to have enough warning uh, to protect sensitive spacecraft and other systems from their impacts. Bill, if there's one thing that we could learn from this mission that we just don't know about the sun, what would that be? You know, if you look at the sun outside, you see the, the photosphere. That's the visible surface of the sun. It's about 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you go up about 300 miles, a very short distance given the size of the sun, that temperature jumps up to millions of degrees. They don't know what powers that. Where's that energy coming from? How does the corona function? What energizes it? And what's blowing all that material, the solar wind, out into the solar system to affect us and the other planets? Very fundamental question. They don't know why. Uh, perhaps the Parker Solar Probe will provide some answers. So exciting. I can't wait to tell my kids about this when I get home today. And the only thing I really remember so much about space from growing up is my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas, the planet lineup <laughs> from the sun. That's all I'm left with, There you Bill. go, except now you got to take one of those pizzas off the table, right? Exactly. That's another story. You're absolutely right, Bill. Bill Harwood, thank you for joining us, sir. Sure thing.